Hello, my name is Tessa Evans and this is my informational speech. Right now, there is no denying that everyone has different perspectives and beliefs when it comes to political candidates or what the United States should do about ISIS. Everyone wants to be right and is quick to jump to conclusions. Listening is very hard, but it is necessary to understand others and society. Jean Hoffman, a Quaker peace activist, pastoral counselor, and founder of the Co uh, Compassionate Listening Project, once wrote, an enemy is one whose story we have not heard. Jean recognized that compassionate listening is a tool for reconciliation. She developed this tool after understanding that all people in a conflict are hurt and need to be heard in some way. Her main belief is that once you hear the other person's story and comprehend their complaints in afflictions, um, you won't be able to consider them as an enemy. Hearing each other's story exposes unhealed wounds and allows for common compassion and understanding. You may disagree with them or find what they have done repulsive, but at least you will, be, you will see them as a human being. Hoffman believes that everyone has goodness and partial truth and it can be found by, li by being listened to compassionately. Compassionate listening, according to Jean Hoffman, requires a few different things. Compassionate listening requires open-ended questions that are not antagonizing and listening in a non-judgmental way. Listeners should not contradict or respond with judgment and should only question to draw out more information or to make sure that the person questioned understands what you're asking. A mediator could be assigned before the conversation begins, allowing only one listener to respond to the speaker. Being a good listener means being able to sit in attentive silence. This can be more effective and welcoming to the speaker than any open question. Jean Hoffman also believes that listeners need to seek the truth, see through masks of hostility and self-righteousness, and to distinguish the trauma suffered. The listener can do this by not trying to change those who are sharing or speaking. The listener should only try to love them. The more a person feels loved, the more likely they are to share their inner thoughts and truths, which may or may not help transformation and reconciliation. Another important condition for the listener, according to Jean Hoffman, is to seek to humanize the other. This means the listener is able to recognize that the speaker is a unique human being. Then usually to talk, the talker will be able to perceive that and they will start treating you, the listener, the same way. This can open up wonderful opportunities to understand, um, for understanding, resolution, and peace. Jean Hoffman also believes compassionate listeners accept, need to accept others' opinions and um, validate the right to their own perceptions. Listeners must not elaborate their own positions because they are trying to better understand the speaker. By listening, they validate the other's right to their perceptions. Listen, listeners should not defend themselves and be closed off. Compassionate listening helps break down walls of defense or mistrust. This enables people to be heard and gives them the opportunity to change their opinions and to make more inf uh, informed decisions. Through compassionate listening, um, fear can be minimized and the people involved in the conversation will be more prepared to take action. Because of Gene Hoffman's teaching and, and actions, society is able to come together peacefully and have eye-opening conversations. Jean Hoffman believes that only love will save us. In her essay, Speaking Truth to Power, she says, Then we must listen. We must listen and listen and listen. We must um, listen for the truth in our opponent, and we must acknowledge it after we have listened long enough, openly enough, and with the desire to really hear, we may give the opportunity to speak our truth. We may even have the opportunity to be heard. For no one and no one side is the sole repository of truth, but each of us have a spark of it within. 
Perhaps with compassion as our guide, the spark in each of us can become a glow and then perhaps a light, and we will watch one another in awe as we become illuminated. And then perhaps this spark, this glow, this light will become the enlightening energy of love that will save all of us. Thank you for listening to my speech.